Okay, so I was going to wait and I was going to put this video off for a little bit, but I'm not. See, there are still many other things that we need to do. We still need to get to the game shelf. We need to clear it and figure out what's staying. There's a lot of talking point videos that are going to be coming out. And I do mean a lot because there's a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. Things that are coming down the road and things like that that we just, we just have to talk about. There's talking point videos on the way. But there's something that I have to open because I have to see it. I got the Lords of Power Beast Man. And that I have to see. So, and here's the thing, I'm very new to all this, but for anybody that doesn't know, there is a line currently in the Origins collection for Lords of Power. There's a couple of these, okay? And what this was, as to my knowledge anyway, is that back when they were doing, back when they were making He-Man, okay, when they were first getting all of it put to put down and they were figuring out what the toys were going to be. Originally, the toy line was going to be called Lords of Power. And this is where my mind goes everywhere. Because Lords of Power is very much an idea like Conan the Barbarian or something of that nature. Just a fantasy barbarian story. Okay? And that's what the toys were meant to be. And you can still see massive parts of this idea in He-Man toys. Which is another reason I'm so very interested in the toys in general is because the way I see them, they're barbarian techno-fantasy. They're like the coolest version of... of, uh... Conan-esque D&D with... You know how sometimes during your D&D games you reach that point where somebody wants like a bazooka blaster and you just kind of give it to them because we're just all having fun now? That's what all this is to me. It's what it feels like. And so the idea of this is immensely cool. Now, they released all this stuff, or rather... Okay, they never released Lords of Power, except they did, kind of. There was an exclusive, from what I understand, at one of the cons where they gave out four characters, and those four characters were based in more Lords of Power design. From what I'm understanding about these characters, and I could be wrong, but this is the way that, this is the way that I've seen it so far, I believe it was Skeletor, He-Man, Beast-Man, and Merman. That was them, the Lords of Power, the ones that were, they kind of had, they kind of had a more Lords of Power design, kind of to show what the toy line would have been like had it come out. And it was like a big thing and everything, and it, but it was exclusive. And we know about exclusives. In fact, that's one of our talking point videos that's coming up. We know about exclusives. We know what happens is the people that can get them, get them fast. And sometimes the people that want them like me, or you, or the casual collector, because, yeah, <coughs> excuse me, um, you could say that I'm a hardcore collector, okay? But, see, my collecting spans a lot of stuff that represents me, a lot of stuff that I personally like. And because of that, you could almost call me a mid-level, partially above casual collector of everything because I collect a lot of Wonder Woman. There's an entire shelf to it. I collect a lot of Gunpla. I make a lot of it. I really, really like this, as you can tell, as it's blown up and it's all over the shelves. Um, I collect a lot of art pieces and things like that. I collect Star Trek figures that are up there. I collect Ranger toys. Like, it's all over the place in terms of what I like and what I feel represents me or a part of me, and that's the things I collect. So for somebody like me, this is a huge deal, because this I was never going to get. Chances are this was going to be scooped up day one, either at the convention or at exclusive sales. And when it went out, it was probably gone lightning fast, and then once it was gone, it wasn't coming back. 
and most of the people that got it that are willing to part with it are parting with it at scalper prices. And we're not surprised by this. We understand how the markets work. We're not new to this at all. But like I said, there will be a talking point video that goes over this because uh, Mattel is finally doing something that I kind of want to talk about because I think it's a big deal. I think it's a huge deal and it's a step in the right direction. But look, I was never going to get this. It was never going to happen. It was very much like the Grizzlor that came out and sold out immediately and a bunch of scalpers basically got a hold of a bunch of different, uh, like a bunch of different single figures and said, now we're going to sell them at six times their value and I'm not going to pay that. I'm not because I will not pay a scalper's price. But then these came back out. They were made into retail for this, and this is a big deal. This is the right way to do it. As I said before, and I did, I never expected this one, but as I've talked about before, I think that if it's a mainstay character, if it's a character that you know is going to sell, uh, Beastman, Grizzlore, things of that nature, these are main characters. They should be retail, and retail should be accessible. I'm not expecting them to print forever, but I expect that basically anybody who wants one that's willing to jump on the wave should be able to get one. And if they sell out like crazy, there's no harm in a little overproduction because sooner or later somebody's going to want a second one of them or something like that. It's true that peg warming happens. But it's also true that most of the time, at some point, even the peg warmers come off the pegs because people want another version or they want to get into customs or something like that. These will eventually sell. But this I never expected. To re-release the Lords of Power stuff. And I understand this, I, from what I understand, this is a little bit different. But this is it. This was my chance to own something from the Lords of Power line. Now there's two of them that I'm aware of so far that have been released like this, that I can just go get them. There's him and there's Merman. And Merman, personally, looks better. And actually, I'm going to make the argument here that I actually think this might look better than the original Beastman as well. But let's go ahead and see it. So, like always, right off the bat, here's a good look at the box in general, and the box is absolute solid artwork. It always is solid artwork, and I love the fact that it's all original packaging, or at least it's faked as original packaging. It's solid, right? There's no reason, there's no reason to complain here. Uh, there's two characters on the back that I'm very interested in. I like the fact that you can see a couple figures that you don't have. I like this original packaging, like always, that I've mentioned a hundred times. And of course, we're going to cut that off because we plan to keep that. But let's see him out of the packaging because we know, Bill talks about it all the time, I love the packaging. You know that's not going anywhere. Let's see Beast Man. Here he is out of the package and I gotta say, I love it. I absolutely love it. That's not even an exaggeration. This is one of the coolest ones that I have opened from the entire line. And, and I gotta say, if I, if I like this guy, and understand, I don't own everything yet, but if I like this guy with anything, I think that he's going to look really cool battling um, Battle Armor He-Man. Uh, this Lords of Power one is really cool, and this isn't all of it either. He actually came with a set of armor, which I'm currently opening right now. You could probably hear that, so I'm sorry about that, but i got to get it open. Um, it looks like a bunch of, it looks like a, it's, a, it's a decent little mess of straps, but nothing that's overly complicated, and it's really solid armor. It looks really cool. It looks like it's going to be pretty unique, and it's just going to, it's really going to add to him. It's really going to add that flair to him. It's going to be something really special. He is cool. He is so cool. I love the red. I like his big, crazy power belt thing. I love the bracers that he's got on his arms. I like that he's more like Gorilla. He's just... He's so savage looking. Uh, I always thought Beast Man looked a little goofy, personally. 
I thought he looked a little goofy in the cartoon. I thought he looked a little goofy in the toy. I thought he looked a little goofy when he showed up even in Revelation. And I do think he looks way better in Revelation. But compared to some of the other designs that I've seen, there's something funny about how this big bestial dude just tends to often catch me as, I don't know, me finding him to look goofy. This doesn't look goofy. This looks super awesome. I am legit impressed. Let's put his armor on. And there he is. There's armor and everything. That's what he looks like. The armor wasn't too hard to get on. Took a little bit of adjusting, but it's all just easy straps and everything like that. And once you get it on, his look is complete. I think that this dude is really solid. And he doesn't come with any weapons. He just comes with that armor. But you know what? He doesn't need weapons. I think that's one of the things that I find so cool about him is I can look right at him and tell you this dude is a monster. Like, he very much gives me that old-style barbarian impression that the man, the man with the axe, the man with the giant axe, the big, burly Arnold Schwarzenegger-looking mug that has an axe is at the disadvantage. And when you can create that effect with one of these figures that you blatantly feel like you look at him and he doesn't, he doesn't need a weapon, he's that cool, he doesn't even need a weapon, it almost seems like the person that's coming after him is at the disadvantage that's solid. That's perfect. And this is another thing I was talking about with the Grizzlore comment. When I talked about Grizzlore and the fact that um, if he was going to be such a pain to make with the hair, just make him like the Beast Man and things like that, you can see that he has hair and everything. The effect works on him in terms of solid plastic, so I don't see that it wouldn't have worked in terms of Grizzlore. This guy is fantastic. He will look absolutely amazing on the shelf. Absolutely zero regret as to the fact that I just bought him. He is fantastic. Easily one of my favorite figures in the entirety of the collection now. And that might be an interesting video for later as well, if you want the truth of it. And there we go. That's, uh, that's it. That's Beast Man. That's Lords of Power Beast Man. And it is awesome. It is truly awesome. It is easily one of my favorite pieces in the entirety of the collection right now in terms of in terms of uh, origins. It is incredibly solid. I'm really happy to have one of these and I'm super interested now in seeing some of the other characters up close because in person even some of them that and I'm not saying that I, I knew right off the bat that I was gonna like him but some of these characters that I've seen I've seen them in person and then like seen pictures of them and pictures they almost never do justice like there's something about there's something about seeing them in person that can sometimes change the way that you feel about a character easily like easily hands down like um, originally, I wasn't interested in getting uh, a Faker from Revelation. Until I seen him in person. And it was something about seeing him physically that I could actually look into the details. Well, I bought him. <laughs> I did. I bought him. And that's one, of those, that's one of those things is that I know, like, I don't care for Merman. I haven't cared for even one version of him that's been released so far, necessarily, until I saw the Lords of Power Merman. And when I got to looking at him, I was like, oh man, I think I might actually like that design. So now I'm going to pick him up. He looks really solid. And this guy is phenomenal. If, you even, if you've even had the consideration to pick up a Beast Man, a Beast Man, Okay, or if you're just getting into this kind of stuff, like I'm relatively new, I'm very interested. You can literally see there's an entire playlist with my entire journey through this stuff so far. You can check that out if you want. Um, I'm very new to all this. So my first Beast Man that I ever bought was astonishingly cool, and we're going to be opening him in a video or so. And that's the second Beast Man I ever bought. And uh, I don't regret that in the least, but I had to have that Beast Man because that Beast Man is the Lords of Power Beast Man in terms of origin for sure, and the original toys for that matter. 
that happened, is the best beast man. He's just the best beast man. He is, he is so good. Everything about him is so good. I can't get him to focus. His focus is bad. His focus is so bad. Or maybe, maybe that's even more terrifying. Is that there's a big beast man out there. And it's not that they can't get a good picture of Beast Man. It's that Beast Man is actually blurry. There is a large, out-of-focus monster in the Lords of Power universe. And that, in its own right, is terrifying. Later. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.